thousand feet, thirty-seven thousand feet high into the sky, and we know that because they were seen flying alongside aircraft. Well done. Now you can see that they bank around, they'll come over the top of your head and land facing into us. And that's just because they need to land with the wind in front of them. And it means they're for a little bit of a nice controlled landing. Coming right over the top of the trees here. Ooh, beautiful. We might not get too many landings down the front here today because of the awkward wind, but we will introduce you to each vulture as we go. Each one has a name and a little bit of a personality to go with it. This young man down here, I say young man, uh, not very young anymore. This is our breeding male. His name is Dad. Really inventive. Dad here is a breeding male. He's a successful breeding male. He's bred many times here at the zoo. In fact, one of his young, her name is Verity. She's in the back aviary at the moment, sitting on a nest with a baby vulture of her own. We've got a family tree of vultures going on at the moment. We've got granddad and grandma out with us we've got mum and dad in the aviary and baby vulture too very sweet coming in who have we got can you land put your brakes on good job this is valerie whoa and that one there is our breeding female her name is mum mum and dad breeding pair and valerie down here she's uh, come to us whoa good job she's come to us from colchester zoo to come and do some flying to learn to be a vulture. That sounds really silly, but actually it's a bit of a proven fact actually that uh, flying vultures, vultures that have been flying from a young age, make better breeders in later life. And that's because they're a fitter, healthier bird. Um, so we get a lot of vultures brought to us here at Banham Zoo because of look at the space we have. What a beautiful arena. They've got the space to fly. And that does mean that they, um, they can get nice and fit. Hello. Ready for flying. This one, the character down here, she's the one that's a little bit different. She's not a Rupal's griffin vulture. She is an African whiteback vulture, a slightly smaller uh, species of vulture, but beautiful nonetheless. You might be able to spot though when she flies, look, no white back. Very confusing. We've got a white back vulture without a white back. Very confusing indeed, but that's because she's a baby. She's only four years old. She won't get her adult feathers until she's around five to eight years. So she's got a little bit more time before she gets her adult feathers. And they're born brown from head to tail. That counts with camouflage in the nest site, but also shows that they're not dominant. The dominant birds, they are a little bit more feisty. Um, so the birds do want to show that they're not dominant in a young age. And uh, that's why they're brown from head to tail. Coming in for another landing. Well done. Good job. What a beautiful species of bird. But a lot of people come to the zoo and they walk straight past the aviary and they go, oh, that's an ugly bird. We don't need to see those. And we're here to change your mind. They are beautiful birds. Look at that wingspan. You cannot deny that is a beautiful sight to see. With a lovely little soaring over the top of you there. Well done, Kimberly. They are amazing birds that do a great job out there in the ecosystem. Out in Africa, vultures play a very important role in keeping Africa clean. Vultures are not birds of prey, technically they're scavengers. They don't catch and kill prey, they don't kill any animals themselves, they just tidy up after other animals, they are scavengers. So what they do is when they're up nice and high, those thousands of feet into the sky, they fly over the open desert lands out in Africa looking for food, and they're looking for food that's being left behind by other animals. Whether that's being left behind by things like carnivores, leaving a carcass out in the field, but even by things like poachers. Whoa -ho -ho -ho! You blinked then, didn't you? That was coming straight for you. Good break there. Luckily, that is mum, and luckily she's a seasoned professional. She's a, she knows what she's doing. It's the youngsters we have to be a bit careful with because they're still learning, still learning the brakes, still learning the, the uh, steering. But vultures out there in Africa, they come down onto a carcass once the poachers, once the carnivores have left. They then eat that carcass down to the bone. They leave nothing on that carcass. Now that's a very important thing, because what that really means is that they're actually helping to stop the spread of bacteria and disease. Because if you're out in Africa in the hot African sun, one of the things you really don't want to do is to leave meat out in that heat. And so what the vultures do is they stop that meat from getting dirty and disgusting and that does mean then 
that they're stopping bacteria spreading. They then eat that meat and their, their stomach acid is stronger than battery acid. Very, very strong indeed. And that means they can digest all kinds of diseases from things like anthrax to botulism and it means that they can stop that spread in its tracks, stopping other animals from becoming poorly too. So they play a very important job role. But we see them as these dirty, disgusting animals because when we do see them, they do have their heads buried inside a carcass. But they have a bald head to keep themselves clean. That helps them to uh, keep all the dirty juices uh, out from getting them poorly. And they scratch it off when it's nice and clean. But also, they will also take a wash when they can. Now, you've all seen them fly. Hopefully you enjoyed it, but you're all going to enjoy this more. And it's the vultures running. Yeah, they're going to run over to head vulture Emily. There it is. <laughs> nothing better. Go on mum, go and join the party. There you go. And we're going to say a big thank you to our vulture team as Emily puts them away. And if you were one of these people coming to the zoo today thinking that vultures were dirty, were disgusting and were maybe a little bit ugly, I hope we have changed your minds just a little bit. And by being here in the zoo today you've helped us already because your entrance fee helps us with things like building a brand new breeding aviary to allow us to breed these uh, critically endangered species. And as, with the experts are doing a little bit of research, they think that within about uh, oh, our lifetimes, definitely our children's lifetimes, we can see vultures disappearing completely off of the face of the earth. We've lost vulture numbers in the last 40 years by 95%, so it's very important to do breeding like this in captivity. So by being here, you've helped us out. It's a great thank you for myself and the team for being here today. If you want to support us a little bit more, Sully's over here with wristbands and he's up that end with wristbands. You can grab yourself one for a pound if you want one. But if not, enjoy the rest of your day here at the zoo. For myself, Sophie and the team, thank you. And